Okay, we come back to our particle exercise. And in the last one, we have tried to use the part head, part source, and part Q old in order to build a very primitive particle system. So the part head will initialize the particle system where you can also control the speed. And the part source will define the number of particles you would like to generate per, per each of the frame. And the part Q O will try to eliminate all those old particles when they live for for certain periods of the age and where you can use this particular number to control how long you would like to see the particle in the system. And in this exercise, we try to add more things into the particle system. The first thing is we can also control the velocity of the particle system and also by means of velocity, you can also control, for example, the direction where the particle system will emit the particles. So this is the part velocity. And within this particular object, you can have a number of parameters. So the first parameter in the first inlet will be the domain. So it's usually we use the points or sphere in order to indicate how you would like to emit the particles. And for the exercise, we're going to use the spheres. So that means we would like to emit the particles on the surface of the sphere. And for each of the sphere, we need to define with three additional parameters, which is the x y, z, and r. So x indicate the x direction, the horizontal one. y is the vertical one. So z is the one which go through your screen. And the x, y, z is actually control the direction where you would like to emit the particles. And the r will be the radius of the sphere. You would like to, for example, on top or on the surface of the sphere, you would like to emit the particles. So we start with a sphere, and we do the x0, y 0.1, and z also 0. And then the radius of the sphere, we use 0.1 to start with. So this is the way we start with the first particle system. You can, for example, control those number and also the life. Or maybe the speed. And the next step would like to explore a little bit on the direction of the emission. So we change, for example, the x into 0 0.1, whereas the y will put a 0 here. And then we have a look of the difference between the this version and the last one. And in this version, you see the direction of emission is towards the x-axis. This is the right-hand side of the screen. And with the same effort, you can also modify the z-direction. We have both the x and y equals to 0, and z is 0 
So the effect of this one is all those particles will emit it from the center and then move towards your face. There is kind of common effect you find in those Star Wars movies. So after we experiment with the velocity, we can introduce some form of forces which will, for example, modify the path of the particles. The first form of the force will be the gravity. So the gravity is the attraction of the Earth in common sense. But you can also define the direction of the gravity according to your own specification. So the parameter will be x, y, z, which is free number, which define the direction and the magnitudes of the force you would like to use it as a gravity. So if you would like to simulate the physical world, for example, usually the x direction will be zero and the y direction will be a negative number so we can start with a smaller number to test with and then also the exact direction will be a zero so we can only have for example the downward attraction from the earth So this is the way we implement the downward attraction. So of course you can modify, for example, the change of the speed and other parameters to create a more natural form of fountain-like effect. In some cases, we may find that the force around here is a little bit too big. You can fine tune it by giving a smaller number. And reduce the overall speed. Or better still, we resume, for example, the velocity and use only the y direction instead of the z one. And which can naturally give you some form of the situation which is similar to the natural environment. Again, I can fine tune the number to increase the force a little bit. So this is some form of more natural effect of the particle emitted up towards the sky and falling down according to the law of the gravity. So you can see that I usually just modify this y number. So this is the attraction of the gravity, which is towards the ground. And I also fine tune a little bit the speed and also, for example, the, the age of the particle you would like to keep. So this is the first kind of force you can use it to, for example, define some gravity-like attraction. The second form of 
the force will be a more general one. We can define a point in the three-dimensional space. So it's called the orbit point. First of all, you define the point in space by giving the free number with the x, y, z in the 3D space. And then the second parameter is the gravity, which is kind of attraction force. So for example, I can define the space, a point in the space, like for example, it x equal to 2, whereas the y and z are zeros. And then I define the force, or I can just use a number to define the force in the last out inlet. Then we take a look of the result. So this is the default situation where you have the orbit point in the location where it is roughly around here. This is the x equal to 2. And I can use a smaller force. And you can compare the situation. So it's kind of the rotating. It is kind of simulating the the attraction force in the orbit in the galaxy, where, for example, you have some form of galaxy objects around here, where maybe a planet around here, and the particle will be emitted and attracted towards these particular objects. And because of the initial velocity, the particle will not move directly towards that particular object, but it will move in a cur curvy of orbit, similar to, for example, the planets in the, in the outer space. And of course, you can experiment with different value of this attractional force. And beside this particular number, which define the gravitational force, you can also modify those numbers, which define the location of the attraction. So in other exercise coming later, we'll try to, for example, modify this location according to the movement of the user in front of the camera. So we'll use a two-dimensional position and map it into the three-dimensional space and use it as a way to attract, for example, the particles. You can change it into point or line. So at this point, most of the particles we have created come in only one single color. So actually, you can have a number of colors. And unfortunately, you do not have a great variation of color. And in terms of the particle system command, we come with another one called the part color. Which allow you to have two additional inlet. So we have the color 1 and color 2. So each of the inlets will come with as a list, which is three number that define the color in forms of RGB. So first of all, I define the color 1 with color yellow. And then I define another one as blue.
then I test run the the patch. So in the very beginning, before I click in the color message, it come with the original white color. And if you select the first one, so it will be a mixture between the white and the yellow. And then if I further click on the blue one, you will see the mixture between the yellow and blue one. So this is how you will modify the color of a particle system. So this is the point view and the line view. So in this particular patch, we try to explore different forms of forces. First of all, we use the gravity, and the second one, we use the orbit point as a more general way of attracting the particles. And the way we control the initial velocity will be this particular command, parked velocity. So we define a sphere, and along the surface of the sphere, we have the particle emitted out. And those are the simple way we can generate a particle system without any interactivity. So in the later exercise, we try to incorporate the use of interaction, for example, the use of the mouse location or the use of the user location in front of the camera to modify, for example, the attraction force in forms of position and also in form of the attraction force and those will try to create some form of graphical effect or digital effect which integrate with the movement of the user.